we all know efficiency and productivity opposes each other. Meet me, I'm the founder of ASP.NET MVC Bootstrapper, which is an open source enterprise development framework to build system for hundreds and thousands of users just out of the box. In today's session, we're going to see how to install it in your machine just by few clicks. You can reach me alim at developer-organism.com and you can get the playlist by clicking on here or you could get the features video by clicking on here or you can get the comparison by clicking on here. Our today's video's sponsor is rereviewapp.com. We all know action speaks louder than words so today we're going to just see things by doing it not by telling it. You can get the framework by this URL. You can actually see in the description to find the link or you can just Google in and get the link as well. I'm here at GitHub. Uh, there are many ways that you could download. Uh, you could actually download this one from clicking on here but I would suggest you should go to the releases and get the latest release and in the latest release you're going to get the uh, latest project template which is actually there so you can actually get it by clicking on it here it would be only uh, 3 or 4 MB file so I have already downloaded it here is the file that I have just downloaded from github I'm going to copy the file and go to uh, documents documents on Visual Studio 2013 or which version that you are using uh, probably it will not work with 2012 but you can try so uh, in the 2013 folder you're going to get into the templates and then project templates and then uh, paste it here I already have it but I'm going to replace it that's it now let's fire up Visual Studio we're going to install it here in, um, in my github folder go to new project or you could choose from new project here same thing here uh, when you click on web it's going to show one no problem what you're going to do is click on the visual C sharp and go below you're going to find the dev strapper because it's the earlier version we named it as ASP bootstrapper it turns out when there is a dot it makes some problem when you actually create the project so that's why we actually renamed it as a dev bootstrapper so we're going to put it in this folder and let's say sample enterprise let's say so if I go here you're going to see that uh, the project is created and with this you're going to get a readme file and I'm going to open that readme file here in Visual Studio as well okay let's open from here so first execute the project that's the first idea first run it it's not going to run but it's going to download a lot of packages that you need after running try to restore NuGet so you can actually restore NuGet so you cannot actually do it so you can actually restore NuGet by uh, clicking on the solution not on the project in the solution and then clicking on enable NuGet package restore that's the second step and then update package reinstall try to do that it will take some time but it will fix everything so another thing I do after that is try to build it again so it will fix some of the things as well okay it's done and try to rebuild it again okay fine so now come in the package manager so if you don't find the package manager go to tools NuGet package manager so you have to have NuGet installed package manager console you're going to get that and just run the code so we have done reinstalling and now again open the readme file uh, now you're going to see that rename the database in the web config so if you go to web config it's going to show a north wind there so remove this one it will not be in the final version as well so these are actually our uh, samples that we have tested so here the name is dev strapper but you're going to rename it as per your company let's say if your company is X Y Z so we're going to name it as X Y Z X Y Z account so these database will be created for SPNet identity information now run this command you don't have to change anything because when you actually create the project it's going to rename itself so you just have to run it 
Okay, so there are some still problems. So let's try to run it. Okay. Okay, so um, this thing I'm going to actually exclude from there because it's it removed from the new version in the final version it will not be there so you don't have to worry so let's see what the problem is in modules validations boom okay let's try to build it okay it's successful now just run the command now run the next command. Okay, so if you just go to app data, you're going to see that um, if you open all files. Okay, XYZ accounts. So account is created. Now if you're trying to open it, it's going to attach it here. So when it is attached it here, you can actually open it using um, SQL Express tools which is better far better than this one because when you run SQLs here it actually goes through several checks and which takes a lot of time to execute 10 megabytes SQL or something like that so the idea is we're going to run it in SQL management tools and this is the local DB that it's now connected with or at attached to it so we're going to open this one from our SQL management studio so I'm here in my SQL management studio now I'm going to just paste it and here I'm going to see my database this one this one is our current database so the next thing is if you just go to the readme file it says that then copy the SQL script script folder scripts folder uh, seven zip and something like that unzip it and run it that's the idea so this is the file that it's actually talking about so let me go to the folder and then let me just extract it that's it so it's it contains the country information and other things for the system so that you don't have to actually go through and every time find country information or things like that so that's it and then we're going to just run it and wait it took me 34 seconds to run the whole query there are some errors just ignore those because these are not relevant and now if I just run the project because stored procedures are also created so if we have any new ones then you can actually create it so stored procedures are also created automatic you don't have to actually create it from the stored procedure folder so now just run it congratulations you have done it so let me give you an example how it looks and how it works so if I go to the register page okay so let me fix that if we go to any of the editor templates we're gonna find that this validation class is actually referred in all of those editor templates so what I am going to do is remove all and open all I'm going to stop the project so this is for now in the final version you don't have to do this these are going to be happening all itself now let's run it okay if, if we just go to the register page sorry again I might have missed another class reference from those utilities so I'm going to remove those by just opening those and replacing those just bear with me for a few seconds Now let's make a fresh try and voila, we make it. For the first time, many things will be disabled. So uh, what you can do is go in the content scripts and dev plugins and then every component runner. And here, um, you're gonna find this one is disabled. The idea behind this plugin is that when it runs, it's going to actually minimize the text boxes which is a uh, UX concept when you have a lot of input fields users get bored and they just leave they do not actually sign in or register so the idea is give them little fields they feel comfortable when they actually fill it up others are going to come 
uh, or add in the place. So let me just create one. So these are going to be Ajax based, uh, directly verified with your database and things like that. So when you actually type the email, uh, on time validation is already there. However, there is also validation for your uh, database checking at the same time. Email is valid. So these are actually plugin based so if you want to make any of the fields this type of ajax based validation you can just do it by um, let's say two or three minutes coding all are there these will be shown in the features video so i'm just actually showing you some demo that how you can make it work so when uh, the country comes you're going to see all the countries so IP informations are also in the database so you can actually write a code to detect the IP and find the country as well so these are also actually linked um, and let's say uh, select a country which doesn't have any more than one language or more than one time zone there is no time zone it's automatically selected and uh, let's say I'm really typing some numbers and uh, let's say I change the country to let's say Afghanistan the number is changed pack is code and uh, uh, language is added because it has three languages so let's go to United States where uh, they have more than one time zone so you're going to find a lot of time zones there so this is how the systems is actually working behind the scene the which we actually pull it down from the database these are only the glimpses. there are actually a lot to cover a lot to show which you can find in the features video now finally let me create the account with a visible name and email address Let's say let's try boom done so when you're done registering it will also take care of your emailing system and everything so you could just go to the admin panel and then if you just go to config there are several things you can configure at the first time so first thing you're going to do is uh, copy and paste this static URL and um, URL and the idea is that we put it there we could actually use URL dot action but URL dot action actually takes a lot of time to configure everything so it turns out a static typing from actually database field is a lot more faster we have actually tested it many times so you have a testing URL and a live URL and you can just set it up from your uh, config is it in testing environment or live environment that's it and here also you have office setup where you have your admin emails office emails and something like that which will be directly suited in your in contact page however the idea is uh, you could actually set up SMTP set SMTP mailing system which is going to send the mail uh, to uh, others from this email address and password and so on and you could also uh, configure your Facebook uh, authentication and so on so if I now go to my email should have got an email yes so email confirmation so here is the raw URL that I should actually take care of and it's really nice if there is any uh, either somehow it's going to happening so it's going to send you the email so email settings are going to be here so if you uh, just set up as a developer so there is a, a developer email address so um, yeah, this one so this one so every error it it's going to happen or occur it's going to send it to you as uh, the developer and uh, you could actually set it up and test an email by just clicking on it so uh, okay so it's actually gone we have to actually save it so SMTP external and so on let's save it okay saved so if I now just go there I'm going to see yeah these two emails so if I exception is thrown you could actually test it by like this it will also give you uh, which project it's actually running which URL it's actually running everything that you need in exception stack trace and everything so you actually don't need Elma to configure it however Elma is also configured if you like the video hit a like thumbs up share the video subscribe the channel and please make a blog post and share the project 
with others. And if you like it in GitHub, give it a star. So if you don't like it, give it a dislike and comment because we need to understand that why you don't like it. And thank you for watching. If you have any question, you could shoot in the comments below or you could actually mail me. I'm very fast in replies. And I work for Developers Organism. We could visit our website, developers-organism.com, which is currently under construction. And uh, you could actually reach us through emails, info at developers-organism.com. Thank you.